time to celebrate the greatest time of year with Emperor John Wayne's Freaky Flex, starring the King of Cringe himself, Emperor John Wayne Frankenstein! time of year when all the ghosts and ghoulies appear. Happy Halloween, boys and girls! That's right, it is the spooky season where I present some of the greatest cult classic monster movies and horror movies of all time. This is, of course, Emperor John Wayne's Freaky Flicks, where we bring you great cult classics and horror movies, action, adventure, and whatnot. Just classic movies of all sorts. Sometimes movies that are so cheesy, we have to bring them to you live from the cheese capital of the world, Wisconsin. And boy, do we got a cheesy one for you today. Straight from the schlock vault, crypt of cinematic curiosities where we will unleash the atomic horrors of the past. Tonight we present Monstrosity, also known as the Atomic Brain, a 1963 sci-fi shocker that will leave you questioning the boundaries of science and insanity, originally released as Monstrosity, where they wanted youth and beauty would pay millions. Only beautiful, shapely girls need apply. No references required. Appointment after dark only. As you can see, the plot is revolving around a mad scientist offering a brain transplant to a beautiful young girl. Actually, this greatly resembles one of my favorite other horror movies, the brain that wouldn't die. But we'll get into that later. Now, it was originally released as Monstrosity in the theaters, but this cult classic was later rebranded as the Atomic Brain for television, capitalizing on the Atomic Age fears of the time, not to mention all the famous Atomic movies. But why the name change, you ask? Well, it seems a few ma makers wanted to Nook the competition with a more explosive title. And with the success of other atomic themed films like The Atomic Submarine and The Atomic City, it was a blast marketing move. They truly radiated creativity. Well, before we begin, you can quick put it on pause, or run to the bathroom, because it's going to be about an hour. A little longer with the breaks that we're going to delve into the twilight world between reality and fantasy. And the best way to watch movies is with snacks. Oh, nom, 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 nom. Popcorn being the number one thing to watch in the cinema. And of course, you'll need a big honking soda to wash all that popcorn down. So we're going with big ol' moonness. <laughs> like Mountain Dew, but a little cheaper, and a little tastier, and a little spicier. The favorite drink of Juggalos everywhere. And we always like to support the underdog, like me. I'm the underdog. And if you don't believe it, all I can say is, do you have any up dog? What's that? What? What's up, dog? Nothing's up, dog. What's up with you? <laughs> and of course, we've got to have our theater style popcorn good and plenty. Now, the strange thing is, is I actually hate black licorice. Well, I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite candy. But for some odd reason, good and plenty is different. Mm -hmm. 
Mmm. I like what invented. Even though it has a black licorice, I need that candy shell. But it's just the right balance. Mmm. Mmm. And, um, of course, for those of you who like black licorice, there are certain drinks that have that too. And we got, for the crunchy salad, we got Whoppers! I have a few Whoppers to tell you. Oh boy, mm. That reminds me. I had a friend who had a great marketing idea. He tried to sell it to Burger King, but they wouldn't go for it. He was like, you should sell boxer shorts with your slogan, home of the Whopper on the boxer shorts. But Burger King just didn't like it. And finally, we need something fruity. Well, because we're a little fruity sometimes. Skittles! Well, by now you're back. You probably uh, took a leak, mm, got some snacks and candy. You're ready to roll it. I'm ready to roll it. So, let's just get on with the film. Let us celebrate Halloween with Montrosity, the Atomic Brain. And with that, roll it! Is the secret of eternal life just around that corner? Today, medical science patches up mutilated bodies, transplanting human skin, eyes, limbs, even vital organs. Is the next step the transplantation of the human brain? Many scientists answer yes, but they pause and add a grim warning. For in the ancient folk legends, tales are told of blood-sucking vampires, crawling out of graves to live on the bodies of helpless victims. Is man now doomed to produce a race of ever-living monstrosities, worse than the vampires of legend? Will ruthless men and women of great wealth and power greedily buy or steal the living bodies of the young and beautiful so their brains may live on forever? Such questions may seem fanciful, but at this very moment, scientists are working on the answer to brain transplantation, and human bodies are used. This girl was buried in a nearby cemetery yesterday. Only a few hours ago, her body was stolen. By Dr. Otto Frank, and brought to this hidden laboratory. He has grafted a living animal's brain into this newly dead body. If the experiment works, the next step will be the transplantation of a human brain. The brain cells are being reactivated by an atomic fission produced in the cyclotron. Has he found the way to outwit death? Or has he created another? chance of smashing his way into a newly sealed vault. His experiments cannot continue without another body. The watchman's mind was not on body snatches. Just his usual nip. Drinking on the job, eh?
inside the vault, a body waits. This is one of the doctor's mistakes, a monstrosity, an animal's brain grafted to a human body. Leaving the dead watchman, the monstrosity carried the girl's body out of the vault. It fears and obeys one master, Dr. Frank. Here beneath the old mansion, the doctor carefully prepared for another transplant. This body had been in the vault for only a few hours. Chances seemed better this time. Still, Dr. Frank was doubtful. Tissue in dead bodies deteriorates rapidly. Where were the live, fresh bodies he'd been promised? He bitterly resents that every step forward depends on the whim of a miserly old woman brooding upstairs in her bedroom. And Eddie March wonders. Has she been a fool, squandering money on this strange experiment? Money hoarded through a long, greedy lifetime, each day more money, each day death getting closer. Ah, but to start life again in a brand new body, beautiful and young, no price can be too high for that. Can she really trust the doctor? Can she really trust anyone? Hasn't everyone tried to cheat her? Wanting her money while they smiled at her ugliness? But they never got a penny. Oh, how she made them sweat. Especially this old fool, companion and gigolo. How many years she's kept him dangling on promises. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man, especially when he comes cheaper than servants. That's the Austrian girl? Lino Rogue, 18, no family, pleasing personality, whatever that might mean. Hmm? Thick ankles, pimply face. But she always smiles when she's spoken to, very likely. Well, application forms for a servant girl don't usually include bust, waist, and hip measurement. We'll interrupt this mm. program to bring you a All three will be here tomorrow, and then you can choose. Early this evening at Greenhaven Cemetery, the body snatchers brutally murdered night watchman Robert Payne, 62, who evidently interrupted his killers during their ghoulish task. His neck was now broken. The imprint of a huge pair of hands was found on his throat. Someone. It's the opinion of the police that the same gang that previously... Bring to Dr. Frank. A missing person, not a murder victim. So that's what he was doing.
where his hocus pocus had it. The doctor transplanted a brain from a live dog to a dead human body. You saw the creature walk out of that cylinder alive. How many failures since then? Still, it's your money. The bodies must be fresh. This specimen is excellent. And the police are looking for the body statue. Why the local cemetery, Doctor? Are you trying to blaze a trail to our door? The final test was essential for your protection. As for the police, if they come here, I hit the switch. A nuclear reaction is set off. Close the circuit breaker. Ah. And in a matter of minutes, this house and any evidence it might contain becomes a radioactive hole in the ground. Be careful. We can wait for that until after your operation. Well, nothing must go wrong. There's no sign of life. Watch. scrubbing floors and making beds. But when my time's up, I'll be able to look out. That's strange. A foreign domestic agency paid my passage, too. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm from England. No. Is this your first trip? Yes. I'm awfully excited. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little boy. I know speak English very good. Are you going to work for Mrs. March, too? This sounds like a sister act. You, too? Nina Rose? Yes, sir. Anita Gon Gonzalez? Beatrice Mullins, eh? That's right. Are you Mr. March? No. I work for Mrs. March. Come along. 
three new bodies, fresh, live, young bodies. No families or friends within thousands of miles, no one to ask embarrassing questions when they disappear. Victor wondered which one Miss March would pick, the little Mexican, the girl from Vienna, or the buxom blonde. Victor knew his pick, but he still felt uneasy. Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl is insanity. Still, Hetty's plan to transfer her fortune to the new body had been brilliant. Unpleasant to think of what was going to happen to these girls, but a man has to consider his own future. What would happen to him if Hetty were to cast him off after all these years? Now, who wants to have a 25-year-old girlfriend? Warm welcome to hang out. Well, there's your new home, girls. Gives me the shivers. Aren't there any neighbors? No. Are there any other servants? No, but I don't think you're going to find it boring. Except maybe in your scowl. Jolly little place this is. No one should leave this house without permission. Now, hurry along. Hurry up. Now go. Turn round, slowly, get the doctor, get the doctor. As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. Charming, isn't she? Did you want something? Uh, Mrs. March is waiting for you. The girls have arrived. She doesn't have a brain. Might be advantages. <laughs> oh, God!
I want them examined immediately. Very well. This way. Victor, the doctor can conduct the examination perfectly. <laughs> what an old spoiled spot I am. <laughs> Have you disconnected the phone? Can't I depend on you for anything? Won't it be nice when those girls start calling police, employment agencies, immigration authorities, consulates? There will be no phone calls. Idiot. She's useless. There is one more test I should make. Do anything you want with her. The other two? Perfect medical specimens. All right, Anita. Get dressed now and wait for the others. Mrs. March, I am now giving you notice. I do not care to work in this house any longer. I demand that... You have signed an agreement. If you have any objection, you will discuss them with the immigration authorities as provided for in your papers. But, Mrs. March... Later. Stand up, my dear. I've got the same measurements as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <clears throat> the lucky girl? Yeah. Allow me to be the first to offer congratulations. <laughs> to both of you. <laughs> For me? in the basement, Anita. Nina, your room is upstairs, right across from the top of the stairs. I'll have to show you. to take a break so you can refresh your snacks, quick run to the bathroom, or just sit around and listen to me discuss the finer points of this movie.
Now, behind the scenes, director Joseph F. Robertson crafted this low-budget thriller in just eight days. Atomic paste production, indeed. But did you know our lead actress, Marjorie Eaton, played a role in the Galactic Empire? That's right! She portrayed the Emperor in Empire Strikes Back, bringing menace to the cosmos. Her tales were literally out of this world. Apparently, they decided to reward her illustrious career, playing many characters in science fiction and horror by giving her a chance to be the Emperor. However, sadly for her, she was replaced in Return of the Jedi and then eventually edited out of the Empire Strikes Back entirely. But, you know, she was an old woman playing a creepy old man. But, of course, their new casting for the Emperor was perfecto. Ah. From atomic brains to imperial power, Eaton's range is electrifying. Of course, I love how Dr. Frank, I'm sure that's short for Frank and Stein, how he looked with his radioactive suit and his welding goggles. Ah, a man whose fashion statement might be after my own heart. But, in any case, let us return to the eerie mansion where science and horror collide. But don't get zapped by the cheesy special effects. And remember, folks, this film is to die for. So let's run it! Maybe she went with him. She didn't get out of this prison without permission, that's for sure. Yes. But she would have said goodbye. Why should she? We only met her yesterday. I don't blame her for not wanting to sleep in the basement. Oh. It's funny, though. Mrs. March wouldn't even listen when I asked to be dismissed. This house gives me the creeps. She doesn't even have any uniforms for us. Be what in the world do you think you're doing? He told us last night to clean and polish in here. Look at your hands. That will leave a stain on them. Now, now don't argue. Go in and wash them immediately. You can put the things away after Nina cleans them. Mrs. March, where is Anita? Anita? Oh, she left last night. I would like to give notice, too. I will discuss it with you another time. Nina! 
Come here this instant. Yes, Mrs. March? Your name is at Nina. But Mrs. March, she's got polish all over hands and I'm not doing anything. I don't want you running up and down stairs. Those pretty legs of yours will get ugly muscles. Send Nina to me. Yes, ma'am. I'll be in my room. Be come with me. I want to show you something. Anita wouldn't leave without taking her clothes. I think we'd better get out of there, fast. B, I'd hate to go if she's still here. You go now if you go with me. Last experiment before Dr. Frank would be ready. But this was the most critical of all the experiments. For the first time, the grafting operation would be performed on a living human body. And the brain would come from the doctor's favorite cat. Anita was ready. Make sure we won't run into her.
hate to say it, but this movie would be a lot better without that cheesy, coincidental music. But that's half the charm. I'm here, Mrs. March. She's locked us in. Open it. I said open it. Mrs. March. It took long enough. The lawyer will see you in the morning. I told him you were going to change your will. You'll have to check the basement door. It broke loose. Anita. Where? Oh, I don't think so. Somebody help her. 
think you should have locked them up. They're not about to leave this house after what they've witnessed. They know Hans is outside there. Even if we could get past that creature outside, there's still the electric fence. The phone's dead. Can't get help that way. If we could get the car... That's it. Victor! Victor! He likes me, I guess. If you could get the keys from him... I was having a little nightcap. Who do you think you are pinching me? What? What? Maybe you like some company. Someone like me? Mm -hmm. That's more like it. Don't you like me, Victor? Hans is chained. Let's go outside. Outside? I think I'd like that. All right. Time for another break. Time for you to put on pause, run to the bathroom, get some more snacks, whatever it is you need to do. Or, of course, listen to me. Now, this is the time we would play a commercial from our sponsors, or I would go do a sales pitch for our sponsors. If we had any, but we don't. But if you'd like to just sponsor one of these, just let me know, and I'll be happy to work something out. As we dwell deeper into monstrosity, notice the claustrophobic tension within the mansion walls where these lovely young ladies are being held prisoner against their will. The single location became the backdrop for the entire film, adding to its unsettling atmosphere. A true master class in low-budget <coughs> horror. <coughs> they are truly stuck to life out of every dollar. <laughs> Something to do when you're trying to make it, not a dime store budget. The Atomic Age fears that fill this film still resonate today. Will our characters escape the clutches of madness or <laughs> succumb to the monstrosities within? The radiation of fear is palatable. Don't bury your fears just yet. We're not <laughs> done. <laughs> with the atomic brain. One thing that's very interesting is in the news recently there has been stories about an attempt at a human head transplant. It was supposed to happen last year, but for some odd reason, no for the word. So, this movie resonates today even more than before. So we're literally right on the verge of having rich people being able to transplant their brains, or heads anyway, on other bodies. Of course, the idea they have here of animal human head tr brain transplants is a little wonky because they would need to have a skull that's the right size. And the animal brains would be a bit too small, the human brains a bit too large. But you know, this is one of those old horror movies that don't really necessarily dwell that much with reality. But in any case, it is time for us to continue our celebration of Halloween with more of 
the atrocity. Roll it! <laughs> Always thinking with the wrong head, like most men, being taken advantage of. Although I do, we do hope these young ladies make their daring escape from the dastardly trio of the mad scientist, your lady, and her. Shh, her Victor, will. Victor. What's your mama, daddy? Of course, Victor's kind of dumb. Because once she gets a young, smoking young body and she's rich, she's gonna dump him like yesterday's trash. But he deserves it. Let me help you. complex, isn't it? The human eye. She's unconscious, but she'll live. No. She will live. How I need her all. with us now. You've had a bad shock. Get out of here, both of you. And stay with me.
Why don't you do something for her? I've done what I can for now. Later, an operation might be possible. I'm preserving the eye. Let me show you. Come over here. The cellular structure is being kept alive by these electrical vibrations. I use the same principle in keeping that hand alive. She is a very lucky girl. You think that ironical? Let me explain. I'm the only man alive today capable of restoring your friend's sight. Dr. Alexis Carell, who pioneered the transplanting of vital human organs, kept a portion of an animal's heart alive for many years. For this, he received the Nobel Prize. And I, who have so far surpassed his efforts... Surely you don't want to compare yourself with Dr. Carell. He was humane. I, too, fight to preserve life and to find the means to improve the lives of future generations. Your it's viewpoint is that narrow, ignorant one held by the medical society today, which forces me to work in a place like this to give in to the whims of a foolish old woman because she can supply me with the funds I need to continue my work. try to get us out of here tonight. No. Forget about me. I won't go. B. Don't talk like that. Mrs. March had not realized her new body had such a satisfactory shape. Perhaps not as spectacular as the English girl, but in excellent taste. She couldn't help being amused. The stupid girl was not only modeling Mrs. March's future wardrobe, but Mrs. March's future body. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. And apparently old ladies, too. You might have knocked when you came in, Victor. I'm sorry. Don't stop your style show on my account. Does my uh, aged Lochinvar disturb you? Patty, that's unkind. Shut up. You see, it's hard for a vain, stupid man to realize that he holds no attraction for a lovely young girl. You're not needed now, Victor. Close the door quietly when you go out. I'm not and to be needed at all. Yes, That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes. After tomorrow, when... Victor! That's enough! Get out! If it's the way it's going to be, when what?
Don't our tiresome questions. That will be enough for tonight. I want us both to get some rest. Try to sleep. But Mrs. March... That's an order. Do as I say. for me, are you? Why would a pretty young girl want to be around an old man? What did you try to tell Mrs. March? Hmm? So that's what you plan to do. Get rid of old Victor once you get all that money. The only thing is, of course, will really be you. Victor, please tell me. Try to make sense. I am telling you. Tomorrow, you'll be one of the richest women in the world. There's a press release. It's in the mails now. To all the major news syndicates. Orphan girl sole heir to March millions. Nina Rhodes is a lucky star. I don't understand. The next press release will be March Mansion Destroyed by Fire. Cinderella Girl, Nina Rhodes, sole survivor. Only it won't be you. It's a pity, too. You're nice the way you are. Please don't let it happen. You could help me and me get away. When you're a rich woman, you wouldn't forget an old friend. A friend who'd saved your life, would you? Get out of the car. And stay there. Victor, we too. We must come too. Wait a minute. Just to make sure. to come with me. No, I won't go. Why should I want to go on living like this? I'll get Victor to help me and we will carry you. Did you want something from Victor, dear? Sit down, my dear. I'm afraid you're wearing yourself out with all this rushing round. I don't like that. You realize she's mad, don't you, Dr. Frank? <gasps> Relax. Hurry, doctor. I'll be ready for you shortly, Mrs. March. I'll be waiting.
It's finally about to happen. You don't know what it's been like for me living with this ugly body of mine. Knowing that any attention I received was not for me, but my money. Well, nobody got any of it. I've never known what it was like to be loved for myself alone. Why did you kill Victor, Mrs. Munch? Victor? <laughs> Victor was a fool. I'm a practical woman, Dr. Frank. A business woman. I've never been a very practical person. I suppose that makes me a fool, too, in your eyes. Of course not. Relax, Mrs. March. Just relax. Relax. for making Vicky a legal guardian. That's right, isn't it? I did sign something, didn't I? That would probably work as well for me. We could stay here. None of this would have to be destroyed. You're breathing better, aren't you? Why don't you try it on your own? I want to know if Mrs. March didn't intend blowing me up along with all the rest of this. You're a very wealthy woman now, Nina. What I must decide is how to keep you and your friends available with the least amount of nuisance to myself. I could keep you under sedation until your signature was required. Or I could replace your brain with one more amenable. What about Mrs. March, Doctor? Mrs. March no longer has a thing to say. Do you, my dear? Completely recovered, I'd say. How do you feel? <clears throat> I guess the transplant would be better. It won't hurt. <laughs> Dr. Frank had enjoyed this transplantation. Mrs. March's brain winding up in the body of a cat. Poetic justice to think of autocratic Mrs. March scavenging in back alley garbage cans for her dinner. But Mrs. March doesn't take things lying down.
did not intend to let her money get out of sight. She would follow that girl. Sometime, someplace, revenge would come. Problem, in my opinion, is that horrible coincidental music. It was just goofy and ruined the effects. I mean, special effects were all right. It had some suspense. The acting wasn't bad. But then there's that goofy, inappropriate music. Do 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 do. It's enough to make you want to drink. I'll tell you what. But oh boy, you gotta like the fan service. I mean, that actually kind of reminded me a lot of the robot creation scene from Metropolis. And that probably was done on purpose. In any case, our atomic journey comes to an end. Metrocity, the atomic brain, may be a product of its time, but its campy charm thought-provoking themes, and Majori Eaton's iconic presence continues to captivate audience today. Join us next time when we go deep into the vault, schlock vault of horror, and these cryptics of cinematic curiosities for another forgotten horror classic. Another journey into the heart of darkness where we get to celebrate Halloween, the greatest season of the world, here on Emperor Jamwin's Freaky Flicks. But before you go, there's a small, itty bitty little favor I have to ask of you. Please subscribe to my channel. I need 1,000 subscriptions to unlock most of the YouTube features. So every subscription helps a real lot. And of course, like, share, and comment, because every one of those activities causes the algorithms 
to recommend my movies and other videos even more so more people can join us in our journey to the twilight world between reality and fantasy between horror and adventure the twilight world where the twilight creatures like us like to dwell after all misery loves company and so do we so until then keep the atomic horrors alive and remember don't split your atoms in your basement until next time please make sure you stay creepy and remember Enjoy the daylight while you can, because at night, we will be haunting your dreams and visiting your nightmares. <laughs>